Hello guys and welcome back to another update for Game Guide and this time covering what you need to know in order to get started with both the power storage units which are unlocked in tier 4 logistics mark 3 and also the power switches and how to use them in your factory which can be unlocked in the Katerian tree of the MAM which makes switches easily unlocked after hitting basic steel production in tier 3. Now during this we'll also talk a little bit about the power changes, but you can expect a separate guide going more in depth about that at a later date, so if you haven't already be sure to subscribe. I will also mention that I am not an expert, and this is solely from my experience in game, so I'm not going to say I know best, and if you do have any better suggestions do stick them in the comment section below. Anyway, let's get started. So first up, let's talk about the power storage. Power storage, once unlocked, allows us to do as the name suggests, store excess power from power plants, with the exception of power generated from biomass burners. Now the reason for this is the biomass generator's fuel consumption scales with factory power requirements. Needless to say that once you start producing power from other buildings, you will now find that the power plants are being used at 100% production. This leads us to an excess of energy which needs to be captured in power storage or else it will be lost. One thing to bear in mind though is if your power plants aren't all running like you can see here, it is because they are not being provided with 100% of their resource requirements. If you're not sure why, do go over to them and check the inputs as some may have changed. I do believe the extractors have changed slightly now, hence my problem here. You can see pipes aren't necessarily aligned. Moving on, if you have an excess of power, the power storage unit can capture up to 100 megawatt hours per power storage unit. Here I have 300 megawatt hours, sometimes 375 megawatts of power going spare and you can see that this is split between the four power storage units equally. If I were to cut two of these power storage units from this section, you can see that the max charge rate is 100, even though we have plenty of energy in excess. This means the quickest we can charge an empty battery to being full is one hour in game time. It can also store a maximum of 100 megawatt hours, so it may be worth it having a larger storage than you can actually charge from excess power. This way it will gradually build up. For ease of explanation, I've also added a switch here and you can see that once turned off from the main power, the batteries will immediately turn on if there is any power draw on that particular circuit. This allows for power storage to passively turn on during power spikes in your grid. And if you wish, you can make this a manual system but you will need to use an extra switch between the secondary circuit and the storage. But note this will need to be turned on and when power drops, if you do not wish it to use it, you will have to have manually turn it off. Now before moving on to the next point, also note that power storage units can be daisy chained and their capacity or current capacity of energy is shown on the indicators on the outside as well as in the actual UI. Another reason to use power storage is to average out fluctuations in power production or consumption. Currently the geothermal power plants are a great example. Power fluctuates between low and high. Placing power storage on this circuit will allow you to average out the power used by storing power during high production or using the stored surplus power during low production. Comparatively, we have the particle accelerator, which uses anything from 250 megawatts to 1,500 megawatts, depending on what item is being produced and at what point in the its cycle it's at. As the accelerator cycles up, more power is used. So unless you want to provide enough energy for 1,500 megawatts of power, I recommend using batteries to store the excess power and turn on as power draw heightens. 
This also means that power storage is incredibly useful and best used in different segments of your power network, which brings us to switches, which is a major overhaul as it gives us a lot more ease of control over our networks and in the future may pave the way for logic switches other than the OR switch, which we will talk about later. In short, a switch allows us to turn one section of our network on or off as we choose. Simple, but how should we use them in our factory builds? Well, I've opted for a main circuit bus which runs down the middle of my factory. This would only be connected to switches or for power storage, or perhaps exceptions would be logistics such as trains, trucks and drone ports and stations. A switch will be at each major section of a factory, whether that's copper, concrete or an iron part of the factory, um, which is what I'm demonstrating here, or perhaps you have self-standing factories like a self-standing computer factory. The concept is the same. This switch will be the only connection to the main power supply and this is really important. One switch connects to the main network and then to the subsector. This allows you to turn off a section as and when needed so that you can provide power just for what you need. So after this switch between the main bus and the sub circuit, I will also connect extra batteries and that's specifically for this section and the, then I will also connect the factory itself. This means that as long as the switch is switched on, the factory will run. And when it is switched off, this section of the factory will run only for as long as the power storage in this section lasts. Now, before we go deeper into this circuitry, let's look at the switch in particular and its user interface. The switch has two connectors, a B connector and an A connector. The switch can be named if you wish by turning on the sign, but this does not show up on the map or compass. So do make sure that you're easily able to reach these switches or you will have to partner them with a beacon. For this, I just use a straight long line or the, the straight power circuit bus, let's call it. In the user interface, we have a circuit A and a circuit B. These relate to the connectors on the switch, and I always try to have circuit A as my main circuit and circuit B as the secondary third or fourth circuits. We'll talk about that later. Here you can see in circuit A, five bits of important information. Firstly, the current consumption of the factory indicated by the orange line here. Then we have the capacity and the production. So capacity is the amount of power your factory can produce when scaled up. So if you're using something that scales up with production, such as the biomass generator burners, then that will show up as the capacity your factory has. It's not to do with the uh, relation of the, the, the power storage. Production stands for, well, itself. It's the total amount of power your factory provides and max consumption is the max possible consumption of all machines that are running um, if they were running all at the same time on this particular circuit. And to get a true value of the max consumption on the two circuits, you need to add circuit A's max consumption to circuit B's max consumption, or you can just flick the switch if you have enough energy spare. Once the switch is turned on and the circuit becomes one whole circuit, you can see they share the same information. Now at this point, if you want, you can actually get fancy with your switches. You can have a switch between each production line. So if you don't want to produce any more, these sections can be turned off as and when. And as you can see here, I have put these smelters on one line, iron rods and plates on another, screws on another one, and reinforced iron plates on a separate circuit. This allows me to pick and choose what I produce and subsequently also store what I want as well. Now this is just an example, but if you have many smaller factories, for example, you can switch them on and off by choice. And to finish off, if you really want, you can get a little bit fancy and you can do this by creating an 
or logic switch by having two switches connect to a power pole before heading to another switch. If you leave the middle switch always turned on, that circuit will work as long as one of the other switch, switches circuits are also turned on. It may not have any uses particularly right now, but later down the line, when we have priority switches, it may well allow us to create some pretty interesting logic gates. Anyway guys, if you did find this introduction to power storage and switches useful, be sure to hit the thumbs up and obviously if you do want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse Patrons, The Calamity, Cerebral Tag, Trebor, JP Zone TV, and our Lunar Eclipse Patrons, Matt Lippard, Chris McCabe, and Lord of July, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which is our editor for our Let's Plays, It's Bits. Anyway guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching, and as always, Ciao for now.